What is going on everybody and this video is going to be my thoughts on the Microsoft E3 2015 press conference and we have a lot of stuff to get into here. Microsoft definitely dropped quite a few bombs at this press conference and they showed off quite a bit of stuff so let's get right into it. They started off the show with Halo 5 which Honestly, it was kind of interesting to me because I kind of figured they would kind of save Halo like towards the end, maybe in the middle, because that's one of their big releases. And usually you don't start off the show with a big release. I mean, usually that hasn't happened at E3 press conferences, so it was kind of interesting. And I'm looking forward to Halo 5, even though the Master Chief Collection kind of flopped, which is a real shame because the Master Chief Collection is... If you look at it on paper, it's a great value for what it is, but unfortunately they just had a ton of problems with the multiplayer, which they are still fixing to this day, which is a real shame. But I am still looking forward to Halo 5 because this is going to be a very is a brand new Halo game built from the ground up on Xbox One. And the footage of this game looked really good. The graphics looked great. It had that... Halo atmosphere and that Halo feel, especially when um, in the gameplay they encountered a grunt, which is probably my favorite Halo enemy because they're like they're like the Goombas of the Halo universe. Like when um the grunt screams, "I regret everything," it, it cracks me up every time when those guys talk. It's it gets me every time. What is also interesting about Halo Five is that you were not Master Chief. Now this isn't the first Halo game that you're not Master Chief. There was Halo Reach, which you're not Master Chief because it was a prequel to the first Halo game. And then Halo 3 ODST, which is a side game that's in between... I think it's in between Halo 2 and 3. I think. I could be wrong about that, but that's what I think. But it is kind of interesting that this is a... I guess it's a direct sequel to Halo 4, and you're not Master Chief. Because you were Master Chief in Halo 4. And it, it seems like you're, you're a Spartans that are looking for Master Chief. So, who knows, maybe in the game you will play as Master Chief eventually. I don't know, but it looks interesting. And I can't wait to try out the campaign. Especially if the campaign has um, full four-player co-op. Because that is one of my favorite things about the Halo campaigns is that you can do co-op with your buddies. Which most single players actually don't let you do. And they showed off the multiplayer a little bit, and multiplayer looked fun, which is the selling point of the Halo games, is its multiplayer. And you can have 24 online matches, 24 player matches. And that is going to be a lot of fun, I can't wait to try that out. The next game they showed off was is a game called ReCore. And when I first saw ReCore, it reminded me a lot of Tomb Raider. A little bit, at least with the female character that was on the screen. Gave me gave me that Tomb Raider vibe. And then she was with a robot dog, which I thought was really cool because I'm I love dogs. So anytime you have that companionship with a dog in a game, you automatically get my attention. But apparently you can take the sphere that houses I I'm guessing the spirit of the companion to the girl. And you can put it in many different robots to create different companions. It looks like an interesting game. I, I, I would definitely like to see more of this game. And hopefully we will. And then... We dropped the first bomb. Or not we. <laughs> Microsoft dropped the first bomb of this conference. And I'll be honest. This was one of the last things I expected. Out of any conference. I did not expect news like this. This holiday... The Xbox One will have an update... That will allow you to be able to play Xbox 360 games on the Xbox One. Yes, the Xbox One will be backwards compatible with the 360. That is huge. That is very huge. And I kind of almost wonder if maybe they should have done something like this sooner. Because that's, that's one of the things most gamers hate when they buy a new console or they're upgrading the console 
Sometimes they want the new console so badly they'll trade in their previous console on their games because they expect a better experience on the new console. My little brother did that with the Xbox 360 to the Xbox One. So, I can't help but wonder if maybe this would have been better if they did this sooner, but regardless, it's coming, this is great. And what's also cool is that apparently you will also be able to play with 360 users even on Xbox One. So that's kind of cool. I mean, it, it, it's really cool because now it almost seems like you will be able to get the full Xbox experience on just one Xbox console as opposed to just flipping between Xbox One and 360. So that's really cool. Although I can't help but wonder, honestly, how are other functions going to work? Like, can you be in party chat with people on Xbox One and 360 at the same time. I, I can't I don't think you can because the system architectures are different. But you know, who knows? You might be able to. That would make this even better. So yes, that is really freaking cool. I did not expect that to happen. They also announced next they showed off a Xbox Wireless Elite Controller, and this controller looks sleek as hell. It looks really cool. It's got a lot of button mapping, a lot of customization, which a lot of people like. But the small problem here is that it's $150. That is insane for a controller. I don't even think arcade sticks are that expensive. I'm sure some are, but... I'm sure the most basic arcade stick is probably cheaper than that. And I can understand spending a lot of money on arcade stick because for fighting games, people feel better playing on an arcade stick as opposed to a controller. This just looks like an Xbox One controller just with button customization. And while cool, that is really overpriced in my opinion. I don't see many people picking that up. I really don't. Then, of course, they um, showed off Fallout 4, and that game looks awesome. I can't wait to play it. I've been waiting for Fallout 4 for so goddamn long. And what's also cool is, apparently, you'll be able to take mods from the PC version and play them on Xbox One. That is really cool. And you'll see this trend here at this conference that there's a lot of partnerships with that Microsoft and Xbox are doing with PCs in the PC gaming world, which is kind of surprising when you look back at history of Microsoft and PC gaming, or at least Xbox and PC gaming with the whole games for Windows debacles that have happened in the past. So yeah, really, it's kind of interesting to see this. Then they showed off uh, Plants for Zombies Garden Warfare 2. I can't wait to play that game. Plants for Zombies Garden Warfare 1 is insanely fun. I highly recommend it if you have not played that game yet. It's lots of fun and it's really cheap now. And the second game looks even better. And what's also cool about the second one is that apparently the zombies, it's now a zombie world. And the plants are attacking now as opposed to the first game where it was plants defending the world and zombies were attacking. So in the non I don't want to say non-multiplayer, but the horde mode of the game, you're now playing as zombies as opposed to playing as plants. So it's, it's kind of interesting. I can't wait to play that game. Then, of course, they showed off Forza 6, which is not surprising because Forza is one of their big sellers. I'm not into um, simulation racing games. I know some people are. My older brother is a big Forza fan, so... I'm sure he and others will be looking forward to this. Me, not so much, but it did. The graphics looked really good. Then they showed off Dark Souls 3, and I'm sorry, I, I like the Souls games. I, I like the Souls games, I really do. But I can't help but wonder if the series is now getting milked. Because Dark Souls 2 came out in 2014, then it eventually got a remastered version. On PS4 and Xbox One. Then just earlier this year. We have Bloodborne. Which Bloodborne is basically a Souls game. 
There's a few small differences, but it's basically a Souls game at its core. And then next year, now we're going to get Dark Souls 3. It seems like we are probably going to get a game every year. And I can't help but wonder if now they're trying to milk the series because it's become really popular now with the last few iterations of the game. I can't help but wonder. I hope that's not the case. I'm definitely going to check out Dark Souls 3 when it comes out, but I'm just a little worried, honestly. Then they showed off The Division. I'm kind of hit or miss on The Division, really, because The Division, to me, it could either have great potential to be really fun, or it could ultimately fail. I hope it's the former, because I don't like to see any game fail, but that's just what I, how I feel about the game. And, of course, they announced that there's going to be an exclusive beta on Xbox One. Then they showed off Rainbow Six Siege, which looks actually really fun. It looks really challenging and fun. I haven't really decided yet if I'm going to pick that up immediately because this seems like a game that you need a full team to really get enjoyment out of it. And I don't play... Or I never have the chance to play with a lot of other people online. I'm usually by myself most of the time. So, I'm kind of on the fence about this game. I might pick it up depending on if a lot of people that are on my friends list actually want to play it with me. So, we'll see what happens there. But the cool thing is that you will get, um, this might be exclusive to Xbox One, I could be wrong. But I guess if you pre-order the game on Xbox One, you get the other two Rainbow Six games for free. Once again, I could be wrong. I didn't hear it all clearly. So, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> okay, then they showed off this game called Gigantic. And it had a cartoony feel to it, but it did look kind of fun. And of course, the best thing about it is that it's free to play. You cannot argue with free to play. Which means I will definitely be checking this out, this game out. So we'll see what happens there. Then, of course, we have what I like to call the Indie Game Frenzy, where they just show off a bunch of indie games. So let's get to it. They first showed off this game called Tacoma. I'm, I'm guessing it's pronounced Tacoma, like Tacoma, Washington, the in the state. And this game will be out first on Xbox One and PC. And it looks like a space survival game. They didn't really show much about it. And actually, now that, I, now that I'm talking about that, has anyone else noticed that there's a lot of space games coming out in the future? This E3 showed off a ton of different space games. So uh, this, this might be a trend. I think we might be seeing a trend here. But unfortunately, it really isn't much to go on about this game. So hopefully we'll get more in the future. Then they showed off this game called Ashen. I think that's how it's pronounced. And it's exclusive to Xbox One. And it's an adventure game. And fortunately, they did not show, they did not show much outside of that. See, that's another problem I have with when you're showing off these new games. You need to show something. You can't just show a tiny bit and then just expect people to react. Like right here. I would love to tell you more about some of these games, but they didn't really show much of anything. So, it's not like I'm ignoring stuff about the game. It's just there really isn't much to say. But let's continue here. Then they show off this game called Beyond Eyes. Which, actually, this game's kind of intriguing. Because the main character is blind. And in this game, you have to use all the other senses to play the game. I think it's kind of interesting because blindness is not usually a subject that's touched upon in gaming and blind people do have to use their other senses a lot more than say you and I have to. Like a perfect example was um, if you watch the movie about Ray Charles with Jamie Foxx when he has to um, kick things with his the heel of his shoe to kind of tell where he is and the sound effects. It, it's it's actually really intriguing when you think about it. So, yeah, I'm definitely intrigued about this game. And, of course, we come to my favorite indie game. 
of this conference. Not, not just the indie game. This might be one of my favorite games that they showed off at Tire E3. It's this game called Cuphead. And this game is basically has a 1930s cartoon style look to it. And it's a side-scrolling shooter. I'm a big fan of Disney. And I'm also, I also like looking at old school Disney cartoons like from the 50s, 40s, and the 30s. I like looking at that stuff, so this really this is really really cool to look at. And the animation the animation looks excellent. It looks just like a Disney cartoon from that era. And this game was also Xbox One exclusive, so I definitely can't wait to check this game out. They also talked about Something called Xbox Game Preview, which is basically like Steam Early Access, where you can try the game out while it's still in its development stages. You can try it out for free. If you like it, you can continue playing it. If not, you can then delete it. But I like that they give you the opportunity to try for absolutely free. You can't argue with that. Then, of course, they announced the popular PC game, Daisy, is coming to Xbox, and... Honestly, I don't know how this is going to be received because Daisy, excuse me, Daisy has been on PC since I think 2013, maybe 2012, but I I know it was in 2013. And people have been playing it for a while and Daisy is really one of those games where either you're into it or you're not into it. It's a very polarized polarizing game. So, it's going to be interesting to see how this actually plays on consoles. And then um, the creator of Daisy, Dean Hall, showed off his new game called Ion, and it will be on Xbox and PC first. And it's a space game. <laughs> there you go with the trend of space games. And it, that's really all there is to it. Is they didn't show nothing. And then of course, we got to one of the games people have been wanting to see the most. Rise of the Tomb Raider, and this game looks freaking awesome. But what I find interesting is that they said it's coming out holiday 2015, and they said Xbox exclusive. Now, everyone is under the impression that Rise of the Tomb Raider is going to be a timed exclusive for Xbox. But during this conference and other conferences, if something is a timed exclusive, it would say first on Xbox or first on PlayStation, but this didn't. This said holiday 2015 Xbox exclusive. So I'm starting to wonder, and I could be totally wrong, I wonder if this is actually going to be an Xbox exclusive. Like this may never hit PlayStation. I don't know. It's something to think about because I, I, I noticed that during this conference. But regardless, I can't wait to play this game, because I'm a huge fan of the last Tomb Raider game. Then, of course, we came to something that I really, really loved, although I was hoping for more, I'll be honest. They showed off the Rare Replay Collection. The Rare Replay Collection is a celebration of Rare, the game developer, which is one of my favorite game developers of all time, it's basically 30 of classic rare games for 30 bucks, meaning a dollar per game. That is an insane value, especially since some of these games are my favorite, some of my favorite games of all time, like Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie. They also had Perfect Dark in there, and then of course Battle Toads. This is a great value. I highly recommend you guys picking it up, because I'm definitely picking that up. But what was also cool is that right after that, they showed off a new Rare game. And it's called Sea of Thieves. And this looks like it's an open world pirate game. And it does have a cartoony style, which fits within the Rare theme. This looks very intriguing. I love pirate games. I've been wanting more pirate games out there. There aren't enough pirate games. There are some that are just downright terrible, like Risen. Don't play Risen games. Just don't play them. Trust me. <laughs> so yeah. I definitely can't wait to see more of this game. And what's really cool is that their Microsoft is finally letting Rare make actual games now. 
Rare is out of Connect Hell. That is amazing. We have a lot of potential here in the future for this. Okay, then they showed Fable Legends, which I'm kind of hit or miss on. I definitely want to see a new Fable game, but I want to see an actual new Fable game, like a Fable 4. F Fable Legends, excuse me, Fable Legends could be fun, but I'm going to have to wait and see. But what's also cool, what's cool about this is that Windows 10 players on the PC will be able to play with Xbox One players. I like that cross-play option. Then Microsoft announces a relationship with Valve Virtual Reality. And then they showed off the Microsoft HoloLens, which I have to say looked really freaking awesome. This look, the way they showed it off with Minecraft and then that the Minecraft world appearing in front of the guy with the HoloLens. It looked really cool. I'm not going to lie. But the problem with virtual reality is that it's expensive. I mean, we're talking four digits here for all of this stuff. You can buy multiple game consoles for the price of one of these virtual reality headsets. So, to me, it seems like virtual reality, while cool, is an expensive gimmick. Kind of like 3D televisions. I used to sell televisions a few years ago. I could not sell a 3D TV to save my life when they first came out because they were just so expensive. Even today, it's hard to sell them because they're still kind of expensive. So unfortunately, while this virtual reality stuff looks cool, it's not going to be bought by a lot of people because most of us aren't rich. But it's still cool to look at. Then they announced the Gears of War Ultimate Edition, a remastered version of the first Gears of War game. I'm definitely picking this up because I'm a huge Gears of War fan. Gears of War 1 was the first game, not only that I played on my Xbox 360, Gears of War 1 was the first game I ever played of that generation of gaming. I was introduced to that generation of gaming because of Gears 1. So, I'm definitely picking this game up. Hopefully it's not too expensive. I'm hoping it's in the $40, $40 range. I'm hoping. Then they teased Gears of War 4. They call it Gears 4. I don't know if that's going to be the actual title or it's going to be called Gears of War 4. I don't know. But they teased it. It looked freaking fantastic. The graphics looked amazing. The atmosphere looked cool. It seems like we're going to get new characters in this game. I mean, I didn't see Marcus Phoenix or Dom or... Actually, no, Dom's dead. Never mind. That was stupid. Forget I said that. What I'm, what I'm trying to say is I didn't see any familiar characters. It seems like we're going to get new characters in this game. Maybe we'll see some old characters in the game. I don't know. But it looked really cool. I love the atmosphere, and I can't wait to see more of Gears of War 4. And that was about it for Microsoft's actual conference. But later on... At E3, they announced that Killer Instinct is going to be on PC, which is making a lot of PC guys happy. But this is, in my opinion, also a problem for Microsoft. If you want people to buy the Xbox One, you need to have legitimate Xbox exclusives. Otherwise, people can just look at this and go, well, I'll just get a gaming PC because I'll be able to play most of Microsoft's games anyway. And I'll be able to do cross-play with Xbox One users, so it's not like I'm missing out on playing with my friends who have Xbox One. So, I still think Microsoft needs to work on that. I kind of understand the relationship that they're trying to create with PC gaming. I do think that's kind of cool. But they need to get more exclusive IPs. They're doing a good job, but I need to see more. They need to do that more. And what I really liked about this conference was that there was no mention of Kinect or television whatsoever, which is really different for a Microsoft conference. It seems like the Kinect is officially dead now. They did not talk about it one time. Some might see that as backtracking, but I kind of can't blame them at this point. Kinect has pretty much been rejected by most of the gaming population. So I can't really blame them. It's a shame because the Kinect had a ton of potential, but it just wasn't executed well. But what really surprised me is 
no television talk. I still thought they might have talked about television a little bit, because Microsoft's Xbox One is mostly about being an entertainment machine, being able to do gaming, movies, television, everything. But they just stuck with games this conference, which I thought was tremendous, but still kind of surprising. So, yeah, I have to say, Microsoft really did a great job with this conference. I was really impressed. And I've always said that putting Phil Spencer in charge of the Xbox brand was a very smart move. And this E3 conference showed why. So, all right, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think, and I will see you all later for more E3 videos. Have a good one.